Hello everyone. So today we're doing something a little different. We're flying Eagle 2 Flying Circus. And that's a totally different experience. Um, it's probably my favorite part of Eagle 2, the Flying Circus. And it's just the open air cockpit um, experience is just amazing. Flying so close to other planes and engaging them at point blank distance is just out of this world. So uh, every now and then, when I get tired of DCS, I jump into Flying Circus uh, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So uh, at first, at sight of all these enemy airplanes, I think there were um, in this mission there were four new boards and four um, camels uh, going up against uh, four of us in the D7, Falcon D7. Uh, that initial sight of all the enemy airplanes coming at me is just amazing. So, um, in this kind of engagement, it's sort of a scramble. You know, you really just have to pick a target and kind of stick with it, take it out, and then go for another one. Um, I have a, still a bit of a target fixation. Part of it is due to um, flying VR. My neck is really getting the workouts, trying to keep my six clear but um uh it's necessary to look behind every now and then because uh the situation is so fluid and changes so quickly um you really can't keep track of what's going on uh, at all times so uh, my philosophy in these world war one dogfights is assume you're already dead and just do the best you can that said um doesn't mean that you can't have a strategy so if you notice at the very beginning I veered off to the right and I'm trying to engage uh, the uh, person who is furthest away from the from the big melee um, somebody who is sort of a straggler uh, and is not part of the big furball that way I can engage him one on one and not to worry about the others coming up behind me too much. Of course, that's not always possible. And as you just saw, there were all kinds of planes flying right in front of me. Uh, but the strategy seems to work for the most part. So here again, I'm going after another guy, and he's on fire. Uh, I think this was kill number two. And immediately, uh, there's a. Um, I think that's a camel. The Camel is an interesting plane. Actually, both the Newport and the Camel are interesting uh, in their own right. Uh, the Camel maneuvers phenomenally, uh, can turn much tighter than a, than a D7, but on the other hand, it's not nearly as fast. So once you catch him, I actually have to throttle, throttle back to uh, stay behind him. Um, and they're quite, those Camels are quite fragile. Um, they take a few rounds and there they go. Uh, as opposed to um, the Newport, which is faster, a little less maneuverable than a camel, uh, but it's also a lot tougher. Uh, it takes a lot more rounds to take out. And you just, you just saw that it just took a few rounds and, um, and that camel is gone. So um, once again, notice that I'm staying out of the fray. I'm kind of staying at the periphery. And then when I take out somebody, I you know, get close to the big fur ball, and I pick somebody who is sort of a straggler, uh, somebody else who is at the periphery, and I try to engage them one-on-one. -on -one. If you jump in the middle of the big melee, you're bound to get killed, because there's going to be someone that's going to go after you, uh, and target fixation in such an environment is almost impossible to avoid. So here again, I uh, picked the Newport that was coming after me. I think he saw me and he went uh, to engage me. And notice how, how fast he is. I made that turn and I lost quite a bit of airspeed. And um, that Newport is actually doing a pretty good job uh, staying ahead of me. And immediately uh, there is somebody behind me. So, uh, I can't really relax too much. Uh, here's um, So now that I'm engaging too, I think that was a camel that just flew past me. So I'm sticking with that original guy. Um, and I'm, again, notice I mean, he's trailing some kind of smoke, but he's pretty far away. So, actually it turns out that's not the original guy. That was um, 
that was a camel that they just passed me and here now here's an airport and in the meantime notice that my wing got all showed up so now I have to be really careful I can't pull too many G's so I can't maneuver as violently as I normally do um, I have to really baby this uh, Foker a little bit uh, so I don't lose my wing so I took some shots at a passing Newport and I'm staying with that um, with that camel that was engaging me and I'm trying to engage it at a distance but you really have to be really close in order for those guns to be effective so now it turns out I'm in the middle of the valley this is what I wanted to avoid in the first place but look at all these guys buzzing all around me so this is not an ideal situation so I'm going to try to get out of it I'm going to fly straight I'm going to pick a target but again I'm trying to stay on somebody who's a little out of the uh, big circle so here's a new port I'm going to try to take him out but again my problem is right now uh, my wing is damaged I don't, want, I don't dare to take too many chances see right here I would have I would have looped but um, I didn't want to take a chance over stressing the wing damaged as it is so I let that guy go and here are two more targets coming up one flew past me um, so it's a rich environment lots of targets of opportunity uh, here's a camel of course he maneuvers much more violently than me um, <coughs> one guy passing below me two more in front I think that camel was chasing uh, one of my guys um, so let's see I'm gonna stick with that camel and see if I can get a little closer um, so, a few hits he smokes um, but he's still flying pretty good you notice how maneuverable he is and there's another camel that just flew just the me um, but I'm gonna stick with this guy for now and see what happens hopefully someone doesn't jump in from behind uh, it shouldn't take too long now that I'm behind him. He's slow, he's low on energy. So, uh, I'm landing some good hits. But it takes quite a few rounds, because these are small rounds. Um, they're not the cannon rounds that, you know, Messers make or something with punch or uh, rushing me up. Uh, so, it takes a few hits. Once again, uh, you know, the camels seem pretty fragile. Again, I'm not very... I'm pretty new to the whole... Uh, ill to see um, so I don't have much experience but it's just my initial impressions of that uh, the World War One planes um, especially the uh, the allies seem to be quite fragile they take a few rounds and, and that's all for it. so here's a new port that I'm engaging and I'm not those new ports they are beautiful planes um, of course I love shooting them down even more uh, I'm really up close to the The other advantage of being this close to a guy is uh, if he has a wingman, the wingman will probably think twice. Uh, you know, this almost took my wing out with all the pieces that blew up. But I was saying, uh, when you're that close to a guy, if he has a wingman on my tail, chances are that wingman is going to think twice before firing on me in, in case he ends up hitting his own buddy. So uh, I like to get up close, really close, and uh, my guns are more effective that way. And I'm sort of protecting myself from uh, you know, somebody jumping behind me and uh, you know, taking me out while I'm not paying attention. So here's another camel. Um, God, there's no one to them. Uh, hopefully this will be the last one. There's a poker down there. So that camel is not even in the middle. I wonder if um, he doesn't seem all that bad. Maybe the pilot's going to be So, you know, from that closer distance, this must be punishing. Uh, so I don't know why he's flying straight level. Normally, you know, they maneuver quite well. So my guess is probably the pilot is wounded or something. Uh, so, I'm just finishing off, and again, I have a bit of a target fixation, but at this point, I think this may be the last guy, the last enemy point. I 
think I'm pretty safe and there are a bunch of my guys buzzing around. Uh, so they're probably, hopefully, guarding my fan. Um, guess I was wrong. That's another camel. Um, so, it wasn't the last guy. Uh, there's another camel and this guy's maneuvering much more violently. And again, my damage wind doesn't let me maneuver this button. Um, the camel's got one of my guys on his tail. And I guess he's a little bit damaged because he's trailing some kind of smoke. But notice how tightly he turns. So you really can you know, two circle fight with uh, with a camel. Um, but they do run out of energy pretty quickly because their airspeed is so low anyway. So as long as you wait it out and you're patient, you can have turn eventually. Um, so I'm lighting a few shots um, here and there. I've noticed how he's kind of shaking a little bit. He's probably damaged something. Um, so it's a good sign for me. Uh, not so good for him, of course. So he's trying the vertical, which is probably not a very good idea, because he's low on energy. And I'm almost kind of contemplating letting him go. He seems to be doing really good. But if I do, you know, he'll turn around and, and go and get him go. Okay, so, uh, um, I just gotta finish the job. And, um, it's taking longer than I, than I expected, being that the guy's winded. And at this distance, um, you know, it's, it's a waste of ammo to try and fire. So now he's trying to disengage, now he's trying to run away, but of course the Fogger D7 is the faster plane, so I can catch up with him. He realizes this, and once again, here's the, um, the maneuverability of the camel, but notice again how he's shimming and kind of shaking all over the place, so he's, he's definitely good. So a few more rounds, and that should do it. Um, it's not... still fun. Now, black smoke and white smoke and all, all kinds of other smoke. And he's still shaking, which indicates that normally he's either damaged pretty badly or he's low on energy. There he goes. Helped him a little bit. He disintegrated pretty much on his own because of his wing was all damaged. And the debris almost took out my body down below. Uh, but I think we all survived. I think the coast is clear and it's time for us to go home. As I look at my damaged wing, uh, I don't know how it held up. Here's my buddy coming behind me. Uh, I guess the other two got shot down. So it's just me and one other wingman. Notice the holes in my wings all over the place and the top wing is definitely um, damaged. You can kind of see it's sticking up a little. Uh, hopefully we'll make it back to the friendly airport. Um, the hard part is identifying these airports. I, you know, it's not like there's a concrete runway or something that you can spot from a mile away. So you kind of have to look real hard in order to find them. Usually it's just a bunch of tents in a little field somewhere. So right there in front of me, you know, to slightly to the left. So I'm going to go down now. Again, trying to be careful not to uh, overstress the airframe. It would be a real shame if I lost the wing while trying to land here. So, um, I'm gonna fly past them, make sure they don't shoot up at me. On occasion, I've approached an enemy airfield, and uh, that was not a good idea. I, you know, I come down low and they start shooting at me and um, yeah, I end up going in. Um, so there's a bit of a hill on this side, so this was probably not a good idea in hindsight because um, I'm going to be landing downhill and that's going to keep my airspeed up. I should have approached from the other side. Uh, but bit as it may, well, um, I don't even know how it worked in... in uh, World War One? Did they even have a like a specific direction or a runway to to come in? 
but they just landed anyway, any way they, they could. So anyway, here we come, uh, down and safe. And we're gonna get a little closer to those tents and get us all parked up and shut the engine off and we'll call it a day. Um, so the whole experience flying these old World War One birds is just phenomenal. It's just, especially in VR, it really feels. I mean, VR is phenomenal anyway. But um, with these World War One airplanes, uh, you know, every sound, every you know, the rush of the wind, you know, the whistling in the wires, you can hear everything. Uh, I've been up in in a few um, open cockpit biplanes in real life. And this feels almost as realistic as, as you can expect in a simulation. Um, so here we are, engine off. Uh, and that's one successful sortie. Um, hopefully my wingman's not going to take me out when he lands. Um, there's that beautiful Fokker. So here's another piece of, um, of sort of towards the end of um, another story. Notice I have a parachute, so just in the nick of time, I'm going to jump up. The poor British guy did not have a parachute, so he perished. So here I come down, um, and oh, what a beautiful sight! You know, back on the ground, safe, contemplating the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.